Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode where I felt cute, but I don't know, might delete later. Well, we're in for quite a unique one today, gang. Long story short, I found a .06 ISO film. That's right, .06, not 6, not 60, not 69, .06 ISO. And to make matters worse, it's almost 20 years expired, but we'll get into that later. It's called Kodak Rapid Process Copy Film, and as legend has it, its sole purpose was for copying radiographs, otherwise known as x-rays, to slides. With such a low ISO, it took on average about 12 to 20 seconds to copy a radiograph to this film at F4. So because this was meant to be mounted in slides, this is a black and white positive film. Probably the coolest part though is that this film blew itself. Yeah, it's blue, probably because radiologic technologists are big fans of the movie Avatar. Either that or they were accustomed to seeing x-rays with a blue backing and Kodak just decided to keep in continuity with that. Needless to say though, it's pretty cool. To develop the film it was recommended you use DK50 developer, but that shit ain't around anymore, so a few cases online suggested using Kodak HC110. I don't know anything about developing, so I hit up my day one film homie, Caleb, for answers. So I grabbed all the necessary chemicals and headed down to Master Caleb's dojo. Caleb was brave slash foolish enough to take this challenge head on, so why don't you go follow his YouTube channel, Bad Flashes. Once they were developed and scanned, the images came out quite flat and blue, but when they were converted to black and white, you definitely needed to add some contrast to really like see the image. Anyway, let's rewind a bit and get to shooting. Since this film, as well as myself, have been described as brutally slow, I figured I would need a tripod, even though I've mastered the art of holding a camera perfectly still for hours on end. Thus, Caleb and I cruised out to the boo, that's what we locals call Inglewood. Honestly, all I was hoping for was to have some shots turn out and not waste an entire roll of film. Whoa, look at that. Damn, bro. Oh my God, that is literally the coolest. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you, 95% of these shots did not turn out at all. I guess that happens with film sometimes. It's a bummer, but sometimes you have to fail to learn, which is an excuse I used a lot in middle school when I'd have to bring my tests home to show my mom. So there we were, shooting a bunch of fire shots to light up our Instagrams, but I guess it doesn't matter now. So let's skip ahead a little bit in time to the shots that actually kinda did turn out. We got a really colorful sunset that evening, which was perfect because I was shooting black and white. Shooting directly into the sun with a telephoto lens still gave me an exposure time of one second with this film.
so what went wrong here? Honestly, it could be a number of things. First off, I shot this film at 0.02 ISO instead of 0.06 ISO, which made things a little more complicated. The reason I shot at 0.02 ISO is because this film expired in February 2003. Now, I don't know what you were doing in 2003, but me, I was watching my favorite movie, Kangaroo Jack, on repeat, and I didn't really have time to think about really low ISO film. So. Since 2003 was 17 years ago, I used the 10 year one stop rule, which basically is if it's been expired for a decade, add one stop of light. While we should be adding two stops of light because 17 years is definitely closer to 20 years, I don't really think that's how the law sees it and I don't think it'd fly in court. But yeah, I ended up doing the math and added 1.75 stops of light, which gave us an ISO of 0.02. Now, it could be that even though this film expired 17 years ago, it was stored properly in a freezer all those years and thus did not deteriorate in line with the 10 year one stop rule, in which case all of my shots would have been overexposed by one and three quarters of a stop, which actually would make a little bit of sense because most of the unusable shots were either blown out, blank, or had little to no detail in them. But I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily think that one and three quarters of stop of overexposure would blow out every shot, especially when every shot was metered the same way and a couple shots did turn out. So what I think it was, even though I triple checked it, was that the workaround that I did for my light meter was somehow wrong. Light meters don't go down to 0.02 ISO because why the f should they? So this is where it gets a little bit complicated because math sucks and I got the shit beaten out of me a lot in high school. Not because I was a math nerd though, I just got beaten up a lot. Since the ISO that we're cruising with is 0.02, that's roughly 12 and 3 quarter stops under ISO 25. Luckily, the light meter on my phone goes down to ISO 1, which is roughly 5 stops under ISO 25. So that means we need to go another 7 and 3 quarter stops down from there. So basically what I did was that even though I was going to be shooting wide open at F2, I told the light meter on my phone that I was going to be shooting at an F stop that was 7 and 3 quarter stops darker than what I was actually shooting at. That way it read the scene as if I was shooting at 0.02 ISO. So F2 goes down one stop to F2.8, which then goes one stop down to F4, etc., etc., all the way down to F22. F22 is seven stops down from F2, so now let's add three quarters of a stop to that to account for the three quarters of 10 years. And bam, F29 is our number, whereas F32 would be a full stop over F22. So yeah. I set my phone's light meter at F29 at ISO 1, which I'm sure is a combination no light meter has ever seen before. So I'm thinking somewhere in there, my dumbass did the calculations wrong. Either that or just reading light at extremely low ISOs breaks it down in a way that I just don't understand. Reciprocity failure is also a thing on this film, but didn't really seem to help me out too much. Basically, it was add half a stop of light after 10 seconds, add a full stop of light after 100 seconds. But if anyone has any ideas on what might have gone wrong, uh, please do inform. I'd love to hear some theories on what might have gone wrong. So in the end, sailors beware. It might be a good idea to test some strips of this film before you actually go shoot it, uh, if you ever decide to shoot it. So is this a valiant effort? No, not really. Will this film replace HP5 as my new black and white 35 millimeter film? No. Will you ever shoot it again? No. What was the point of this video? I don't know. Did you ever think of an ending for this video or is it just gonna drag on forever? <laughs>